Hey everybody, thanks for coming to take the virtual tour of Dogs for Our Brave with us. Um, we do want to say that this is our building as is. We have not cleaned up at all. This is just how we operate on a daily basis. And then we do want to say thank you so much to Andy and Marilyn Gladstein, our founders, for gifting us this beautiful building. It has served us so well and it has helped us to get to where we are today. At this point, we are outgrowing it. So come on in and see what we're about. So this is our lobby. This is where we have a variety of meetings where we do a little bit of training and welcome guests into our training center. Welcome to our office. As you can see, we do a lot of storage in here as well. We have a bunch of our merchandise that's stored in these gray boxes. We have a spare kennel just in case and a lot of other merchandise over here, but not a ton of space. And this is where we work out of. So here we have a quick reference point for our trainers to look at the phases of the commands. The, command, the dogs learn about 60 commands while they're here, and so it starts pretty basic over in section A, and then it kind of migrates down to section D. And we do that because a lot of the commands that start super basic develop into more advanced commands. And then we do have a reference point over here um, this is just really important for our trainers to keep in mind when they're thinking about rating a dog on their performance, when they're out in public, what to expect from a service dog, and how to train them to become the best that they can be. So over here, we have a variety of training equipment, which includes some medical devices. We have a shopping cart. Um, we have our tug ropes, our pill bottles. We've got phones and remotes to practice retrieval, to tug open doors anything to desensitize the dogs to so they can be prepared for any veteran with any ailment that comes our way. So the dogs live here overnight all the time in their bunks. So we really wanted the double dutch door system when we installed these bunks for good reason because we wanted to be able to peek and say hi to our dogs. Santa's taking a nap so she's not going to come say hi right now. And then we wanted them to be able to see out and watch other dogs train as well. For some of the dogs that struggle with reactivity a little bit more, they have blinds up so they can have a little bit more privacy to themselves. And then we also communicate through the bunks. So as you can see, we've got Santa's name up here, what phase of training that she's actually in, who sponsored her, her training, and then we've got anything that she struggles with. So when trainers come get her out for a training session, they can look here and be easily reminded and say, oh yeah, I'm going to work on her barking. She's a talker. We've, got the um, we've also got the amount of food that they get on a daily basis, when they got their monthly preventatives last, when their birth date is, their start date, and when their graduation date is. So this is our backyard. So here we do a lot of play groups. We have a lot of time where the dogs get to come outside, let off a bit of energy that they have, and then they also are able to teach each other things as dogs that we as humans are not able to teach them and how to play appropriately with each other. And so they are monitored quite a lot out here when they are in their special play groups. So right now we've got Jay, Chip, and Kingston all out here to play. So in our backyard we also have a couple pieces of agility equipment. We've got this big red tube and an A-frame to help the dogs build some confidence while they're out here. Sometimes when we rescue dogs, we do get some that are a little bit more shy and giving them this agility equipment as a challenge gives them a sense of accomplishment. While we do love our backyard space and we utilize it a whole lot, it is a little bit limiting in size. We can only have a few dogs out here at a time safely. So as you can see, we also have a few treadmills here in the training center. This is another form of exercise that we can offer our dogs while they're here in training. It's really beneficial because if you have a dog that is really excited in a training session, they have a lot of energy, but they're having a hard time focusing on a task, you can throw them on a treadmill for five minutes, take them off, and they should have a little bit less energy and be able to focus a little bit better. Over here, we have a couple of our restaurant booths that we use to practice restaurant skills with the dogs before they actually go out into public. It's really beneficial because we can train them to get in a smaller space and stay comfortable there for a long period of time. This wall is where we practice a lot of our light switch skills with the dogs. As you can see, it gets a little beat up because dogs tend to want to use their paws first instead of their nose. And so 
We let them get a lot of the frustration out before they decide to try something else that might work better. So that's often when you use your hand, you tell them to touch, and you can have them touch your hand, turn lights on and off, and they can see the light back here behind this wall turn on and off. And then eventually you take your hand out of the situation and they will turn the light on and off for you. So we have a little food nook over here to keep our food safe and secure out of the way of the dogs and keep them safe. This area is part office, part storage unit for our head trainer. We have a ton of wire kennels that are stored up top and a lot of other treats and food items up top to keep away from our dogs as well. We communicate right here as a team. You can come to this board at any point throughout the day and look at any dog any day of the week and see what types of training they've gotten. And as you can see, we use a system of acronyms. So I can come here and say, Lizzie has had technical training today and her public training. And maybe I can move on to another dog that needs a little bit more attention that day. The technical training, which are skills done all here in the training center and public training are all rated on a system of one to five. So we can quickly glance at this board and say, wow, Kingston did really good in public the other day. I wonder what happened. Why did he do so good? Maybe he's ready for something more difficult. Um, or I can look and say, um, Lizzie struggled. What happened? What went wrong? Was something too difficult for her? Maybe we should tone her down a little bit in public. Okay. Over here, we have our training refrigerator. So this is not on and it's not full of food but it is full of water bottles. So as you can see, we've got some that are half full, some that are empty, and some that are completely full. And this is where the dogs practice how to get water out of the fridge. So as you can see, this is our training center. It's served us so well for so long now, and we're grateful for the opportunity that Andy and Marilyn have given us to train dogs out of this building. And so thanks to our generous supporters, we are also ready to train more dogs at a time. And so with that, we only have 10 dogs here, but we're at maximum capacity. So it's one dog in, one dog out, which means with an 18 month training program, we're limited to placing five dogs with five veterans every year. We wanna increase that to 10 dogs with 10 veterans every year. As we have no space to grow out or to grow up, it's time for a new building. And so this new chapter starts with you. If you're interested in helping us out, please consider donating to our capital campaign.